Aesthetics are a subjective and rarely studied component of pleasure experiences. In the Mechanics Dynamics Aesthetics Framework developed by Hodeke and colleagues, aesthetics describes desirable but not necessarily positive valence emotional responses evoked by interacting with games. But how are these responses evoked? Niedenthal describes aesthetics as referring to the sensory phenomena that the player encounters in the game. Today, these constitute mostly visual and auditory elements, which brings us to atmosphere. The study of atmosphere is important to games user research and game design alike because understanding atmospheric experiences can help us avoid dissonant experiences that negatively impact player experiences. Game designer Greg Kassaban has previously described it as being made up of thematic cohesion, internal consistency, and specific detail. Others have described it as a feeling of immersion emerging from coherence among a variety of game elements, such as visuals, audio, narrative, game mechanics, and interactivity. However, to our knowledge, there is no prior work that empirically explores the value of audio-visual thematic fit in creating atmosphere in games. Given the importance of atmosphere for player experiences, and consequently for the sales of games, we attempted to verify the ties between atmosphere and games and audiovisual thematic cohesion by empirically exploring effects of audiovisual thematic dissonance on player experience. We did this in two studies, thereby testing the following definition of atmosphere. When visual and auditory components of a video game have strong thematic cohesion and therefore contribute to the same aesthetic. We conducted two experiments to explore the concept of atmosphere in games. In both experiments, participants watched or played Bloodborne, a Victorian-era-inspired survival horror role-playing game by Firm Software. The game allows for control of various sound settings, allowing us to keep sound effects but mute the music, which allows us to overlay different background music to analyze the effect of audiovisual thematic cohesion on player experience. Its setting and difficulty are ideal for experiencing fear, emotional challenge, and gameplay challenges which trigger fear of losing points. In both studies, participants were randomly assigned to one of four conditions, in each condition, a different audio with a different level of audiovisual thematic cohesion played in the background while participants watched or played Bloodborne's first level. In the cohesive no music baseline condition, no background music was present, utilizing silence as a horror sound and representing the game's most common built-in music condition, as large portions of Bloodborne do not feature background music. The cohesive music condition overlays music from Bloodborne's own original soundtrack arranged to line up with the gameplay in the first level to ensure maximal thematic fit. In the dissonant music condition, happy music from YouTube was played to ensure maximal dissonance from the dark atmosphere of the game, representing the type of music that can disturb immersion. Finally, in the dissonant voiceover condition, speech, which can easily disturb immersion, was used. This included audio and YouTube videos on the history of Nintendo and related franchises, chosen to be at least vaguely interesting to those who would volunteer for a game study, but thematically unrelated to the gameplay and setting of Bloodborne. October 18, 1985, under the name the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, for context, the home gaming market in North America was in somewhat of a crisis in the early 1980s. Participants' ratings of the cohesive conditions as significantly more thematically fitting and more atmospheric than dissonant conditions confirms the connection between atmosphere and audiovisual thematic cohesion and supports the operationalization chosen in this study and our proposed definition. The importance of atmosphere to self-reported purchasing decisions and quality perception was also tested using Likert questions, finding that atmosphere has significant effect on both, further supporting the need to study atmosphere. The supporting study revealed that positive affect was significantly higher in both audiovisually cohesive conditions than in the dissonant music condition. However, this result could not be replicated for players in the lab study, so the conclusion that audiovisually cohesive conditions elicit more positive and less negative affective experiences is only partially supported. Furthermore, facial electromyography findings suggest that audiovisual thematic dissonance may lead to higher intensity negative valence facial events. However, contrary to expectations coming from the existing literature, 
Atmosphere in the form of strong audiovisual thematic cohesion did not impact players' immersion in psychometrically assessed player experiences, leading us to conclude that game atmosphere may consist of additional aspects to audiovisual cohesion, likely including a relationship to interactivity and sound effects. Together, these findings may indicate that atmosphere is a more nuanced or long-term phenomenon than anticipated, which will have to be explored in future work. The results of the online experiment further implicate additional factors which may influence whether players consider a game to be atmospheric. Beyond auditory aspects such as music, sound effects, and environmental slash ambient noises, additional factors include visual aspects like color palette, graphical style, and enemy design, and ones tied to story or game design like setting design, narrative, and level design. Other emerging components of the player experience, such as immersion, sense of presence, and flow, were also rated positively. This, of course, is not a comprehensive list, as participants rated a set of predefined options on how much a given factor influences atmosphere, but it constitutes a starting point for future research. Thank you.